What's up YouTube, I'm just another guy and welcome back to Paris Saint Germain. Here we are today, our first competitive game, it's against Lyon, so, you know, we're starting off straight in the deep end, straight away against, you know, one of the best teams in France, so, we're not going to get a more difficult test, um, so let's talk about a few things. So first of all, I did some transfers, or I did a transfer, and we brought in Del Piero, I know it's not an incredible transfer, he's 40 years of age, uh, I actually brought him in to hopefully try and tutor some youngsters, but it said that due to the fact his position in the squad isn't high enough, he's unable to tutor youngsters, which is a little bit annoying, let me see if I can do it now, he's been here for a little bit. Uh, so yeah, his, his squad's in, it says his importance is too low in the squad. Now, I brought him in, ideally for a backup player, A, um, but like third or fourth backup, you know, not really going to be featuring at all, really. But his mentals and technical ability is still good enough to surely rub off on someone. It's a little bit annoying that I was unable to do that. I kind of regret that signing because it was pointless now. And we also released some guy very first day of the season. Uh, yeah, he's, he just wasn't good enough, really, basically. And he's still a free transfer, free agent. So it just says something. And I basically had a massive staff overhaul. So, obviously, Laurent Blanc left because I came in, and then after my friendly against Celtic, I decided that a lot of my staff were not good enough, so I actually released my assistant manager, coach, fitness coach, and reserve uh, manager, I believe he was with us, this guy. Uh, no, reserve goalkeeping coach, sorry, wrong thing. And uh, I brought in a lot of people. I signed a lot of people, a few from clubs, as you can see, but a lot of just free transfers, a lot of youth. We didn't have, like, any under-19 coaches or setup at all. I had to sign a manager and assistant manager, physio coaches and fitness coaches, goalkeeping coaches. I signed all of these under-19 coaches and coaches ourselves for the first team. And so we're able to represent or get some good training in our from our coaches into this team. So as you can see at the bottom, I've got light training or... Um, yeah, I've got light levels of work coaching in the fitness and goalkeeping area. I need to sign a few more coaches to just lower the general training from average intent or average workload for each coach to a light workload. But as you can see, everything is at a very good level. Our lowest is four star, which is incredible. Uh, five star, you know, attacking coaching, five star aer aerobic fitness coaching, you know, four and a half star handling and strength and uh, dread defending. You know, these are really good and my coaching is incredible. I can get five star attacking. I think get five star defending as well uh, might be able to get five star yeah five star tactics as well so i can you know i can offer great coaching in loads of different areas but obviously i'm limiting myself to one so i can get the very best out of something and um yeah coaching is really good staff is really good now i'm happy with my assistant manager i brought in a guy that's able to help me with the um pre-match you know sorting out pre-match marking and opposition instructions and stuff like that so yeah i'm I, to, to me, the sum, this sum was more about sorting out the backroom stars. So you see, over the course of about, I guess, 10 days, I drastically brought in loads of, um, drastically changed the back, um, behind the scenes of this club. And that was my priority for this, uh, this summer. But yeah, transfer-wise, I'm not going to sign anyone. I really considered signing Ron Vla, but then I remembered he was injured because, sadly, I've got an injury to Thiago Silva. He's going to be out for this game and he's going to be missing for, I think, another three weeks. I think that's the... Uh, another two weeks, actually. Not even three weeks. So, yeah, it's a, it's a shame to see Thiago Silva is... Um, is out injured. Like I said, I was going to bring Ron Vlar in because he'd, he'd be a good backup player for us and also might, you know, get into the first team if he's lucky. But uh, yeah, that fell through because obviously he's injured for four months, which is something I forgot. You know, it's one of the reasons I think Aston Villa let him go because of his injuries. But uh, yeah, that's nothing to worry about. Uh, fixtures, we are going to quickly go over these fi fi fixtures. We lost 1-0 to Celtic to start off with in what was a just bad game from us we conceded in the 28th minute and just offered nothing going forward therefore i had to i changed up the tactics slightly we then followed it up with a three nil comfortable victory over a very small team we played strum grats and drew nil nil this is again another frustrating game we were dominated possession wise so again i had another look at the tactic and tried to change it up and again against another team i've never heard of a french semi pro team we won three one completely dominated the game but again you would expect that from us and but still two penalties from ibrahimovic helped us on our way and a david louise header so Going forward, we're struggling a little right now, and it's a little, it is worrying. It's definitely worrying for us to see that. Uh, tactics wise, this is what I've changed so far. So the fullbacks are no longer wingbacks, they're now fullback supports. Um, and uh, Ibrahimovic is now force nine. We are now on a control mentality, and instructions wise, we have uh, fairly wide. We do shorter passing, we still retain possession, get stuck in, run at the defense. So we no longer play, I no longer allow my players to play more expressive. And, uh, yeah, we still play high tempo, we rarely time waste and all that stuff. So, yeah, this tactic is already developing, already changing. Uh, this, this game today, I'm not confident we're going to get a win, in all honesty, but, uh, hey, we're going to we'll give it a bash. We're still odds on favourite by Skybet, so... 
clearly we've got the players to do it. It's whether I can actually get the tactic to make them work. <laughs> so anything else I want to talk about quickly? I'll, I'll talk about one thing very, very briefly. So you get, um, I wonder if it's in my inbox still. Let me double check. I'll cut here. Yeah, I couldn't find how to get backroom staff up normally. But yeah, when basically the backroom advice has really changed and it gives you some decent information. For example, I was informed of a few youngsters who were probably better suited to go up to the reserves, some reserve players better suited to go back into the under 19s. Uh, going into this match, I was given a lot of tactical advice. I was given advice like we probably shouldn't play control. In fact, we should probably play defensive because Leon have got a really good attack. I was told uh, we probably shouldn't play fluid, we should play flexible. I was told we probably shouldn't play more expressive, we probably shouldn't run at the defense. We probably should get stuck in, we should uh, probably play a little deeper, I think I was told, and stuff like that. I was given a lot of tactical advice going into the game based on the opposition's strengths, and that was really, really useful information, and it, it's, it's cool that they've added that in now. You get that extra depth, you get that extra support from your backroom staff. So, um, yeah, that, that, that's something I want to talk about. That's a cool feature in the game. And that's something I really, really did enjoy when I first saw it. I was like, actually, yeah, this backroom staff now is not just the same old like four or five pieces of advice being given out to you. It's actually useful information that you can try and adapt into your tactic or try and, you know, incorporate and hopefully get a better result at your next game. And I could definitely see that being helpful if you're a struggling team in the lower leagues or a struggling team in a good league. So let's get into this game. Let's talk about the starting lineup. So it is the team I listed to you in the previous game, a previous episode, sorry, but in case you didn't see that, I will go through it. So we've got Siro going goal, Van der Wiel, uh, Makinos, David Luiz, and Kawa uh, Kazawa. Sorry, I'm not too sure I pronounce that guy's name yet. I think it's Kazawa. It makes sense. Uh, so yeah, Makinos is coming into the team as our backup centre back. We do have uh, Stambouli on the bench. But uh, I'm going to go with Mikey Oscars because of his potential. I'm going to give him a go in this game. In fact, I should probably change it to a limited defender. I don't think he's got the ability to play. Uh, what's, is he better suited for this? Um, no, no, I've clicked on the wrong one. Limited defender, about the same. I'm going to keep him limited defender. I don't want to overcomplicate things for him. We've still got Motta playing defensive midfield, Anchorman. We've got Verratti playing centre mid. Right to left of the attacking midfield is still Cavani, Pastore and Di Maria. And up front, we have got Ibrahimovic. And uh, the bench is Trap, Maxwell, Stambouli, uh, Matudi, uh, Reboit, Lucas Mora and Lavezzi. So no place on the bench for our young 17-year-old striker, uh, Odzuni. Odzuni, I'm not too sure about this guy's name still. Uh, but he was injured anyway, so he was never going to get into this. He couldn't get into the squad. But he's someone I do want to play a little bit and hopefully will incorporate him into the bench. But I couldn't find a place on him for the bench anyway. So I guess the injury is some sort of blessing for my selection headache. So anyway, getting into this game. Uh, I'm not too sure what their manager said about uh, the build-up to this game, but I was very calm. I said that we have a chance of winning this. I said, uh, personally, I was relaxed and stuff. I said, this, you know, with the club has got success ingrained in its history and its culture, so this is no different for the players. You know, it's not a new experience for the squad, for the club. And uh, hopefully the players understood that message and can go out there and perform and play, you know, in the way that I'd expect them to, to dominate the game and to... Uh, or, Maybe not exactly necessarily dominate this game because we we are playing against some tough team a tough team but go out there and win the game first and foremost. So uh, they're missing Raphael. I'm going to say it's a miss, obviously. In light of Jose Mourinho's admission of the interesting as signing Cavani, all your immediate thoughts on the situation. I haven't actually seen that rumor, or maybe I've just missed it. Um, I'm just going to say no comment. That's not the time nor the place to be talking about rumors. So Lacazette, uh, Valbuena, you know this is a very strong Leon team and a Leon team that can do cause us problems. If we get, if we give them the opportunity to, so I think it's going to be a great game. This is probably one of the better games you could possibly start a series, a save with anyway. In terms of first competitive match, I don't think you can get more difficult. I mean, you could obviously play in the Community Shield against someone, but uh, I mean, you know, in terms of oppositions, PSG couldn't really get a better one. So let's do this. Let's go, PSG versus Leon. Big game, big rivalry. Let's do this. Uh, one bit of news as well. Ah, Steve Maria gets injured straight away. But yeah, Motta, I'm sort of considering maybe dropping Motta. His preseason form wasn't particularly great. Wasn't good enough, really, in my opinion. But I thought I'd give him a proper run, you know, in... You know, actually, I don't, I don't want to press that. Uh, I thought I'd give him a proper run in the uh, com in some competitive games and see what he could do. Uh, but if he doesn't perform, I will be dropping him, sadly. As, uh, oh, Marquinhos with a very good interception early on in the game to prevent Lacazette getting through. Here is Di Maria on this left-hand side. Will he whip the ball in? He plays it back, finds Pastore, a lot of space for Cavani out on the right, forces a save, gets his shot on target. However, he doesn't really trouble the keeper. We still have the ball. Uh, I think I'm on extended highlights right now. Am I? No, I'm on key. I thought I was extended. But yeah, great opportunity. Good build-up play from us 
early on and Cavani with a decent opportunity he had to you know it wasn't the best chance he could possibly get there was definitely a little bit of trouble you know closed down by the defender uh, but not a bad shot from him not a bad attempt I won't ridicule him for missing that, hopefully. Come to the end of the game as another good clearance from us. David Luiz with another good interception from our centre-backs. And here's Pastore now on our right-hand side. Whips it in, finds Di Maria, who's got time and space. A bang! Di Maria scores the first ever goal competitively in this save. A goal on his debut as well. There's my sore throat illness coming through. <laughs> But what a ball by Pastore to see Di Maria at the far post. Di Maria's first touch is world class. Turning onto his stronger left foot as well. Moving it away from the defender as well. And his shot is really good. It's probably what Cavani should have done in, that, in his first attempt. <laughs> but I won't, I won't, obviously I won't pull him up on that too much, Cavani. <laughs> But yeah, what a start from us. We are playing better than I expected, in all honesty. In 15 minutes in, I'm I'm surprised we've created the opportunities we've created. I'm surprised Leon haven't created the opportunities we've created. We, they've, you know, haven't created any opportunities, I should say. And uh, time is ticking now. Nothing really happening. And match stats-wise, what is our pass completion percentage and stuff? I'm going to aim for that 75% plus range. Uh, we're currently reaching that. Uh, tackles one is really good, actually. We were only averaging around, I think, a 50 or 60% in the preseason. So the fact that that's 80%, I think it's a credit to the team and how well they're playing right now defensively as well. It's dropped down to 70. And headers-wise, yeah, we normally do quite well. As We've got the ball in the box. Ratty's shot is blocked. Here is Van der Weel. He is tackled, and now we need to watch out because this is where we can get exposed because that was the right back being tackled all the way up the field. David Luiz with a good challenge, though, leading the line today in place of uh, Silver, obviously. All right, so Di Maria is probably not going to make it through this full game. I don't think he was going to make it through the full game anyway. I don't think his match fitness is up to the ideal standard right yet based on the four preseason matches, but uh, I'm going to send him back out there in the second half. Make sure the players go back out there. Make sure the cup comes home at full time. I'm happy with my new assistant manager to tell them that. Finardi. Also, I found strangely in this save. I was I was looking for, obviously, I was looking for coaches and stuff like that for, for my team and scouts and things. And I kept finding Italian coaches that were willing to join my team and they were actually good, which is quite strange to me. I, would, I, I guess maybe because the good French and the good English and Spanish, because the leagues I have open, I, I haven't mentioned this, but the leagues I have open are the French leagues, the Italian, the... Yeah, the French leagues, all of the French leagues, the English leagues down to League 2, the Spanish leagues down to the second division, I believe, the Italian league down to the second division, and the, um, did I say Spanish, French, Italian, right, Spanish, French, German, and the German down to the second. So I have them five leagues open, and I just kept finding a lot of good Italian coaches. I've read the hour mark now, but yeah, I was, I was just a bit surprised by that. I thought I'd be able to find good coaches from other countries. So I'm going to bring on Lavazzi. Lavazzi, yeah, um... Do I want to play him as a winger? Inside forward. I think inside forward. I'm, I'm happy with inside forward. I like that role. So, yeah, we're going to play Lovati as inside forward. Bring him on for the goal scorer, Di Maria, who's going to finish or end his first competitive game for us. Uh, finish his debut, contributing a massive amount to the game, which is obviously good news for him. Hopefully, he hit the ground running, unlike, he, unlike his time at Man U, obviously. We're hoping for a successful spell here. But Leon, who have been quiet throughout this entire match, really. So first highlight may be the game. In fact, they've only had one shot all game. They might create a chance here. No, they don't. We're winning the headers in the defense, which is great for us. And now Ibrahimovic with the ball. He's going to find Lavetti on that left-hand side. Another thing I should mention, actually, while I'm on the 3D match engine, as Ibrahimovic manages to score, he makes it 2-0. He missed the initial shot. But fortunately for him, the rebound bounced straight back into his path and he was able to slot it home. But yeah, I do like that little feature of the fitness bar. Uh, it's a cool little feature. Obviously, it's something sort of similar to um, FIFA in that way. Of the, You know, the bar goes down as they get more and more tired. But uh, yeah, I like that visual representation of how tired players are. And you're able to compare it to other players in this, you know, against your position players for example in the same positions and uh, I do quite like that little feature okay so I was going to I was going to consider making the sub but we'll wait we'll wait to the end of this highlight as Verratti whips the ball in unable to find a blue shirt Motta picks it up at the edge of the box and plays it out wide spreading the play which is good to see a cross in finding Ibrahimovic his shot is blocked another block shot and Lavetti makes it 3-0 we have wrapped up this this his game, I think, you know, 3-0 now, Leon are never going to come back. 2-0 was probably a mountain anyway for Leon, but now we've made it Mount Everest. You know, it, it's it's going to be impossible for them to climb it in the, the amount of time we've, they've got left. So we're going to make them subs. We're going to start thinking about our next game now. Um, we'll make the substitutions for fitness. So we will bring on Maxwell 
uh, because I, the only reason Maxwell's on the bench is because I knew Kazawa wasn't going to be able to play the full match because based on preseason, he was struggling fitness wise. So, but normally I would have my right back on the bench, but like I say, today I went with Maxwell and, um, I think we'll bring on, we'll take Cavani off. No, no, no we won't take Cavani off. We'll take, we'll take Pastore off and we'll bring on Lucas Mora. We'll, we'll, we'll bring in a youngster, give him a bit of game time at the end of the big game, uh, because, I do think he's got great potential, Lucas, obviously, and, you know, I want to develop him if I can. He may not be his strongest role, he's actually a more natural winger, but we'll, we'll give him a go in the centre, because, you know, there's not going to be any harm, really, and here he is with the ball at his feet, plays it to Ibrahimovic, who is our captain today, obviously, Van der Veel, who's, again, we've seen him on that right-hand side, he's pushed forward a lot, that right-back, and it's actually given me, it's not been too bad so far, although I'd like to see his cross, I oh, know he doesn't cross again, I'd like to see his cross actually find the blue shirt right um, now, but... Anyway, nice build-up play. There's Maxwell, our other fullback, pushing right up the field. He's cross. Yeah, it's probably not what he intended originally, but it will still somehow works out. We still maintain possession. Here's Lucas Mora being brought down. Still, though, we're piling loads of pressure. And wow, you know, I don't know how long that highlight was there in game time. It was probably, what, three or four minutes of just us controlling Leon, pushing Leon back into their own box and just sort of waiting for that chance to create its, or to open itself up. For us and Lavezzi found that little bit of space and a brilliant shot. The substitute has now scored two goals and it's given me a headache for the next game because Di Maria scored two in uh, scored one in that position. Lavezzi has scored two in that position. Who do I play for the next match? <laughs> you know, do I push Di Maria in the center? But then that's unfair because we've not played bad in this game. It, no one has at all. So look at the match stats. Lim uh, Leon has definitely come back into the oh definitely uh, grown into this game. As it's gone on, but we've just been so much better than them today. And there we go, 4-0 victory over Leon. This is better than I expected, way better than I expected. I'm chuffed with that. 4-0, let's continue on. There's probably, I think, hopefully the achievements pop up. No, the achievement doesn't pop up on your screen, but I've got clean sheet, back of the net, first victory, achievements unlocked. Am I going to get any more? Uh, no, I didn't, but I got them achievements. We've won the French Champions Trophy, which obviously isn't the best trophy, and it's not the trophy we're aiming for, but hey, we've started off with a successful game. We've started off by winning a trophy. Not many managers can really say they start off their or start off their time at a club by winning a trophy. I mean, like Moyes and Ancelotti are the two I can think of that you come to mind straight away because I watch the English League, obviously, when they won the Community Shield. But the way that we've done it against... People against a team I'd expect to be up there come the end uh, come the end of the season. I mean, where are they actually predicted to finish, Leon? Let's click on the league on and go on season preview. Where are they expected to finish? That's a team expected to finish third. So you know the fact that we've beat them so comfortably, it's given me great confidence going forward now. So let's little look at where we're predicted to come. We're expected to win the league. We are odds on favourite, and uh, yeah. I don't think there's anything else I particularly need to go over. Di Maria picked up an injury, but it's only three weeks. Ibrahimovic, apparently, I think, did Ibrahimovic pick up man of the match in that game? Uh, he must, yeah, he must have with a nine. Or Verratti, look at the performances. Wow, just so incredible. Absolutely incredible. And now, let's get forward. Let's start this Champions League campaign. I will next meet you back at the AS Monaco game. Uh, I think the draw will have been made by that point in time. Uh, I think back to my Gibraltar save. Yes, I think, the, I think the Champions League draw is made by... Um, September, by the end of September. So, Monaco game, massive, away from home. Monaco are actually favourites as it currently stands to win that game. Looking forward to it. So, until then, guys, peace out.